Uh, I'm here to share the experiences that we have gained in gathering, storing, and ensuring the safety of data. Um, I'm going to talk about how we started collecting data, health data, and how we are storing it, how we are actually securing the data, and finally, how we are doing data analysis based on the data that we have gathered. Before I would, uh, before starting the discussion on gathering of data, I'd like to stress on the importance of gathering data. Now, what is knowledge versus what is intelligence? If you see, knowledge is something that we have gained over a period of uh, years through our experience by reading books, interacting with people, and all that. When we apply this knowledge, it becomes intelligence. Similarly, if you take the building blocks of AI, they are data analytics based on which machine learning works, and then we have the deep learning. In case of machine learning, it's going to be only as good as the data that it gets, uh, and the algorithm's ability to consume it. The data that we're talking about here, then that we store, are uh, both structured data, unstructured data, it could be images, visuals, or even spatial data for that matter. Uh, I would like to start with the history of computerization that happened in CMC. Uh, in 1970s, we started with the data processing unit, which is a punch card system. They used to take this to IIT to process payrolls. Then in 1983, we had the PDP-11 SN23 mini computers with five dump terminals for crude batch processing jobs like billing. In 1984, they had the microcomputers, which were basically single user systems for OP and IP bill processing, and few labs used to use them. In 1987, the Department of Chips, which is a computerized hospital information processing services, was started. In 1989, we had the Fox and Novel Network. Uh, in 2000, we started with Oracle, initially with pa patient results and pharmacy, and slowly many other modules were added to this. Uh, if you see, the journey of data collection begins at the point of taking an appointment, uh, which, which, which they could take from uh, a web-based appointment or through cash counters in any of, any, any of the ca um, campuses. And from there, when they check in, when the patient registers, and to the time they do a, uh, the, uh, the doctors call the patient and the patient uh, is, uh, uh, visits the doctor when the doctor orders the test and his journey from the admission uh, to discharge uh, in, in between surgery, in all these points of uh, uh, the life cycle of the patient, we capture these data. This is done by using these various modules. If you see, we have the medical records, the nurses, OR anesthesia, the doctor's module, the lab module. Uh, all these modules are also ensured their functionality is there, like we, um, there are way, even the financial data of the patient uh, is captured. Various methods of payments like credit card, debit card, or net banking, or payments through QR, all those information, financial information about the patients are also gathered. If you see on an average day, we get about 6,602 outpatients in main campus and 3,648 uh, patients in Ranipet campus. Putting all the campuses together, we get about 12,500 patients. Uh, we we uh, do about 24,275 lab tests. 45,512 items are getting dispensed uh, on uh, 10,406 prescriptions. On each weekdays, we take about 405 admissions and 392 discharges. Uh, this is a screenshot of our clinical workstation, which is an in-house developed hospital information system. This was a winner of Scotch Digital Inclusion Award for Health. Um, this is what the doctors get to see on an everyday basis uh, in their OPDs. If you see, they, look, they have their OP appointment list and their IP uh, list and all that, and they could do a whole lot of activities uh, on the patients, like um, uh, uh, giving alerts for the patient, marking patients as study from where they can get information. They can um, uh, create medical records, discharge summaries, order tests, prescriptions, images, view inpatient billing. Now, if you see, all our uh, applications that we have developed are tightly integrated with SMS and email facility. We're also currently working on the WhatsApp facility. This is a screenshot of what the doctors get to see uh, about the patient's results. So behind this, what happens is that the uh, patient result starts from the point of collection of sample which is totally, uh, um, uh, the blood samples are paperless, uh, paperless collections uh, that's happening. And these samples then reach the labs. 
Now, if you take each of the labs have a different way or method of processing the results, and the type of results they are generate, that are generated by each of these labs are very, very different from each other. If you take a, bio, a biochemistry result or a virology result, that is totally different from a general pathology result. So if you see these, this is a, a sample uh, general pathology results. We also capture ECG's echo holter and uh, images for gastroscopy. So all these data information are collected uh, from the patient. And also we interface with machines, and this is a sample ABG results that are done on various days. And um, a graphical representation of that is uh, what is shown here. Again, we have a graphical representation of the blood sugars taken over a period of time. And how they have you know, uh, varied over that is shown here. Uh, this is our lab ordering module, which um, uh, they used to order, the doctors used to order the test. Uh, if you see each of the uh, units, like the, uh, the uh, set of tests that cardiology orders most frequently are going to be very different from the one that is ordered by um, uh, medical oncology or for uh, urology. Uh, so what we have done is we have given them a customizable and a configurable lab master so they can put together their most commonly ordered test and um, they can create. We have also given them an option to create their own packages, which could be personal or unit specific. We also have given them an option where they can create, um, uh, when, when, they, when we talk about packages, it could be a disease specific package or a procedure specific package. Suppose if they, they can create a, di a diabetic package, so all the investigations that are related to diabetes gets ordered immediately. Uh, so certain tests that are getting ordered need some prerequisites that needs to be filled. Certain questionnaires that needs to be ans uh, uh, answered by the clinicians before they reach the lab. Uh, so this is a sample set of questionnaires. Now each test will have a different, different sets of questions that are getting asked. And uh, this is also tightly integrated with our procedure appointments uh, module. And also the cancellation information, all that has also been captured and it is online. Uh, this is our um, uh, prescription module, uh, where you can see in this module, if you see, uh, it is integrated with the IDR info. So you know what is the recommended dosage, what are the contraindications, and what are the adverse effects of a particular drug at a fingertip. So you'll be able to identify it and make clinical decisions based on that. And it also tells you the, uh, if a particular drug is available in a particular pharmacy or, or not. Uh, this is a sample screen of a how they make procedure appointments. And uh, like I said, in, uh, the, when, when the patient goes to the operation rooms or for daycare posting, information regarding their disease, the reason why they're getting operated, has there been any complications in the surgery, who was the first surgeon, second surgeon, are there any other departments who are uh, departments or units are, who are going to do a combined surgery, all those information are captured. And if you, t if you say after this, the doctor, clinicians and the surgeons will be able to take surgery logbook from the data that they have entered. Uh, the online referrals to units, both IP and OP is also done online. Uh, so whenever they're transferring a patient from one unit to another, all the information, required information is getting captured here. The IP handover, which is uh, handing over from one unit to another unit is also captured here. Uh, you can see that we have, start, we have so much of clinical data, it's going to be used more for data mining and research. And that's why we have the EMR sitting on top of all this, because we started with the OP, IP, the doctor's orders, interfaces, operations, procedure appointments, templates, and all this. We have, this is our uh, EMR. Uh, this EMR is a generalized EMR that all the departments and units are using. It's the same EMR that the cardio uses or um, uh, the medical oncology team uses. Now, if you see the investigations and uh, the investigations and medications, they get auto-pulled from what has been ordered and uh, uh, medications one from, uh, from the prescriptions, all those gets auto-pulled. Similarly, the histories can be pulled. And uh, if you see the method in which uh, you can input data, it could be manual or voice over text. Once they have entered the uh, OP EMR, a chart is generated, and this is a sample screen of the chart that gets generated. Now, uh, this is a very uh, generalized EMR that works. There are certain departments that want uh, very, very uh, specific 
um, uh, performers for their needs. Like um, uh, the EMR that dermatology uses will be totally different from a shell uh, cardio performer. It could also be a disease uh, uh, related performers. So if you see very specific informations related to symptoms, type of lesions, and how long the pain was, all those informations are also gathered here. Uh, we have recently started the IPMR. We are gathering the data of the patient from the time he starts getting admitted to the time he gets discharged. All those notes are made completely online. This is a quick menu. And if you can see, the doctors will be uh, entering the progress notes that they take on an everyday basis. The nurses can uh, enter their input-output charts. Um, uh, uh, and also the medication order is done online. Our um, allied health notes are there. So everything that happens for an inpatient, all the data that is there gets captured in our IPMR. This is a EMR documentation groups menu. Uh, now that we have seen how uh, we have gathered so much amount of data, uh, health data specifically, and uh, next is I'm going to discuss on how we are storing this data. The goals that we had taken in uh, consideration for storage of data, especially if it's relevance to AI, is speed. If you look at, we have got huge, huge amounts of data that is sitting there, and it's imp very important that the speed at which the data is being retrieved is, uh, is very fast. Uh, because it, AI works on huge amounts of data, and uh, it, only when it, when, it gi when, you give a, when it gives a quick uh, response, then it's going to be of use. Next is scalability of uh, uh, the database, which is the ability to support uh, changing usage of applications and data, and also portability. If you look at, we transfer data to many national databases like NMC or uh, Medical Oncology Registry or the Bone Marrow Transplant Registry. So it's very important that the data that we have stored should be in a format that can be transferred to uh, the national databases based on how they want it. So these are the considerations that we have taken while we are uh, trying to store our data. If you look at, we have about 22 years worth of health data that we have uh, because we started from 2000. And we have about 2.5 TB of structured data and 7.5 TB of unstructured data. Uh, we've got seven campuses and they're all interconnected. We have the CMC Hospital main campus, the Rani Pet campus, the Bar MHC, Chad, which is the Bagaim campus that is here, the Chitur campus, Rusha, the, and High Hospital. If you look at it, all these look at the same subset of data. Whenever any uh, investigation or anything gets ordered for a patient in Rani Pet campus, it's equally uh, uh, anybody can access in CMC as well as on the web. A small subset of data is available or is also available for internet access, like um, uh, payments for the patients um, uh, through uh, 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 web-based or mobile payments, and also for booking of appointments. We have also recently started with a doctor's app, which is a smaller version of the clinical workstation that is there, which, is a, which can be accessed by their mobile. Now that we have seen how we are storing and how we are connecting to various campuses, I'd, uh, next step that I would like to talk about is the security of the data. Uh, the first and foremost thing that is important uh, for security of data is the confidentiality. Now, the privacy of the patient is very, very important as well as the consent of the patient. So we have the data which is compliant with all the IT laws like the Information Technology Act of 2008 and the Personal Data Protection Bill and the GDPR. Uh, so whenever you're transferring data, anonymization of data takes place. And also we have uh, the data that is there has to be clean data. Only when we give a proper clean data can you have a, a good AI based on that. Uh, so we ensure that the integrity of data is protected by giving accesses only to those who have uh, uh, access rights to that particular data, only they can modify it. Uh, for example, a medical report that is generated by a cardiology cannot be modified by some other unit. So integrity of data is protected here. And we have a 24 bar 7 availability, which I'll be discussing uh, in a short while. Uh, this is our Oracle High Availability um, uh, model, which, is a, which works on real application cluster. If you see, we have a three-node rack, uh, and it uh, talks to the SAN storage, and it is getting synchronized with our standby 
uh, DR, which is again a two node rack, which has a SAN storage. Now, if you see, if, if any one of these nodes are down, then the other two can take over and they are still functional. So there is an uninterrupted services that is available. What happens in case of all the three nodes being down, then we have a separate DR which takes over as soon as there is a failure and they start working. So this gives us uninterrupted um, uh, services. We also have a data and audit wall sitting on both these services, uh, servers, which helps us to enforce policy and also prevention and deduction of fraud. We have a separate data mining server which we are using for our research purpose and also we have remote backups. There's always been a question of whether in-house or outsourcing, uh, and uh, this is what we have in CMC. So if you see most of the applications, uh, the healthcare applications that we are, has, is an in-house uh, developed application, the ones that are in all blue. We have a small set of radiology imaging packs that is, that's been uh, done by, uh, another vendor, by another vendor. Um, if you see all these, up, all these applications are there, they are, uh, into, they can work in their indi individually also and they are totally tightly integrated. And if you see if anything happens in an HR module, like for example a staff getting resigned or a staff's bed eligibility changes, it immediately gets reflected in the doctor's module. Uh, similarly, whenever implants are being used in our surgery uh, module, uh, purchase, purchase module, or, uh, is, it's getting connected to the purchase module. So if you can see, all these modules work independently and also they can work together. And all these is done at real time. If you look, the rights of access is based on roles and responsibilities with logs and added trials, audit trials for all the activities have been enabled. If you look at our advantage, we have a domain knowledge expertise. Uh, which is b based on uh, the in inputs that we have received from all the clinicians and the surgeons based on which the entire uh, setup has been developed. And because of this, the, we, the domain mining expertise is the same thing that handles the domain knowledge. And if you look at that data, we have a homogeneous data, meaning uh, all the, all, everything is going to look at the same set of data. And it could be accessible through a client server or a web-based platform or through mobile, intranet, internet, if you see, all our applications have been developed based on need, uh, which makes the high utilization of the application that we have developed, and sensitive information are not shared outside. If you look at our success rate, which is 99.99% availability with 24 by 7 services, uh, and with backups and no shutdowns, if you look at the utilization of our applications that we have developed, it's 100%, because it's purely need-based development. Now that we have, uh, we have talked about collection, storage and security. Finally, um, I'd like to discuss on the analysis of data that we have gathered. Uh, we have a clinical decision support system, uh, which is a rule-based system. Places that we are uh, using um, uh, is in, uh, during drug interactions. Supposing um, a doctor prescribes a particular drug and it's interacting with another drug, it gives you a warning and tells them that uh, you cannot order the same uh, uh, drug. And whenever um, adverse drug reactions are for the patients are captured during their IP or OP, we ensure that the drugs um, are not getting ordered. And also whenever implants are getting, um, uh, whenever implants are uh, being done for the patients during surgery, the expiry date of the implants are captured. So there is a uh, alert system which warns the doctors that within, uh, within this particular time, uh, the implants need to be replaced. Uh, and so they can have a better decision. We also have certain uh, referrals which ensures that, uh, like if you take for example the PAC referral, uh, if they have a particular set of disease, a particular disease, diabetes and all this, uh, it, it, it's, there is a prerequisite that they have to perform these investigations before this referral is given. So when the doctor marks, when the doc identifying the type of disease, a certain set of investigations are ordered immediately. If you look at our uh, decision support system, it's a very scalable system and we have data mining and researches that is done. We have a pathfinder tech, uh, which we are uh, planning to use in our RaniPet campus using BLE beacons. We are also planning to use the uh, uh, asset tracking. We have the facial, we are uh, working on the facial recognition for check-ins and for patient tracking. I'd like to conclude by a saying by Francis of Assisi, it's, that goes like this, start by doing what is necessary, then do what is possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. Thank you.
Thank you, Anita, for the very lucid presentation. I think I have a very serious concern about this presentation. Because last 22 years, CMC Vellur developed a solution. But it is something like a clinical solution for a small clinic. Uh, this solution, when I see there, something like an MBBS doctor is treating for oncology, the same time he is uh, doing some special treatment for gynecology and something like that. The in-house developed software never reached any kind of digitalization after 22 years in this hospital when we see the presentation. Why you are, you are in between all the presentations, said something like that, the vendors are not good, in-house development is good. I don't think in-house development is not good because of this only one presentation. When we came here from Grapes Innovative Solutions, we expected a lot to see from CMC Velo's digitalization. But the, you presented uh, after 22 years of ongoing development process, it's a small, little bit things. There is nothing for the patient data. You are uh, telling that it's a clinical data storage of 22 years. Only the patient demographic details. No other clinical data possibility we can't see there. So what is the answer for this? I'm not sure why, uh, why you're saying that. There are many people, we, when we say clinical data, like I've said here, we have gathered all the data regarding from the, uh, I've said from the point that the patient arrives to the point he's getting discharged. So all the data is getting captured. There are a lot and lot of clinical data that is getting captured, which has been used for research and for data mining. Because of patient confidentiality, that's why I had shared, we do not share any information. I think, sir, we could probably discuss this question further over lunch. Actually, the screens are quite detailed. What she showed is a very brief overview yes. of what we have. And in the interest of time, 20 minutes, that's all she could present. But you could probably discuss this further with her. And if you look in all our presentation, I venture that none of the patient's data is available because of confidentiality clause. And that's the reason. And I think everybody will agree with that. Thank you. Can we have another quick question, please? Medical College. So we talk more about the selection of uh, health information systems and uh, the data privacy. Uh, what is your opinion, Madam, about uh, the usage of uh, instant messaging systems? Because in almost all the hospitals, they use WhatsApp, Telegram. So when we talk more about data privacy in health information systems, uh, most of the uh, healthcare uh, facilities, they use uh, open source WhatsApp, Telegram. So is it right? Or if not, what would be the alternate? Uh, if, like I said, we, all, our SMA, all our applications that we have developed have uh, connected to SMS and uh, email. Uh, it's important that uh, alerts are sent to the uh, clinicians, especially in a health setup. You know, when, when, whenever there is an emergency or something, they want to con contact the doctors. So in that case, they need to, uh, you know, uh, we need to have uh, send an SMS or something. So I, they have to be able to do it. But there are situations where they share the lab reports, clinical photographs, all this being done on WhatsApp, Telegram. My personal opinion is this is not right. I need the expert's opinion. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Joy. Very good question, sir. Uh, the official position of the institution, which we also put out to our employees, is that usage of WhatsApp, Telegram, and such uh, modalities for patient information transmission is not as per the rules. It's not complying with the rules. Now, what happens in the real world is another problem. But our institution is also developing an internal messaging system as part of the uh, doctor's app that can be used to message between people within the system using our own resources. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank I just you. want to add on uh, our HIS is an internal solution, which is our baby. And we are always proud of our baby and thanks to CHIPS of that. But that doesn't mean that we don't accept a review and uh, external validation. So we have some uh, external uh, tech people whom we have displayed this and I would like uh, others to actually interact with them because in the want of time in these two days, we cannot show you a detailed presentation of our HIS. But I think Dr. Uman Ambiar has witnessed it and uh, Anita Singh from Gates Foundation also, I've displayed them so they can give their reviews on that. 
that I wanted to comment on this when, you know, the previous speaker's comment that over 22 years, what have you achieved? I have, I think in my, I, since 1987, since I've been working with all these different solutions, whatever is available, and I've evaluated, definitely in the last two years, I've evaluated more than 40 EMRs, and I still found yesterday when I saw this, this is one of the best in terms of usability. <laughs> and, and I must clarify here, a lot of people would look at this and say it doesn't look the user friendly or the UI UX is so bad. For me, UI UX is what, can, what is being used by people on ground. So I'm, I don't look at a fancy user interface which is not being used by the doctor. Very expensive solution. So here people are used. It's very relevant to what are the clinical questions that we all have as clinicians, what do the patients require, and in that segment it's very good. They look at, if you, if you have a question today, they know how to prioritize the questions and which speciality to focus on, and an extremely clinician-friendly and healthcare-friendly uh, solution that I've seen. Whether you will be able to market it and sell it outside and you can do that, and perhaps that's a journey you should consider, but it, to me, it's one of the very good solutions that I've seen. I would love to you know, be a user of the solution. Uh, I have also uh, not asked about the UI or any kind of look and feel. No, the otherwise. utility of the software means natural language processing or voice to test conversion or any type of decision making supporting system is not at presented here because this uh, symposium is focusing on data analytics and artificial intelligence utilization. The presentation is here, not the uh, other uh, patient demographic no. details. So, yeah. That's why I asked okay. the question. Excuse me, sir. So yeah. can we wind up yeah. this discussion? Yeah. Uh, so, so we did discuss that, and they are yeah. all work in progress. So it's not a yeah. big deal. Yeah, so this, is, this conference yeah. is basically catering to a very diverse group of people it's not just only data analytics, also talks about information security and storage of data. And uh, what uh, Anita has presented is one perspective on that whole topic. It's not the entire HHS that we have presented. Yeah. It's only a part of it. If you see, there are lots and lots of features we have not presented because of time constraint and as also because of the confidentiality clause. You've been standing for a long time. If you can make a very short question, sir, and then we'll wind up with this. Okay, I'll try. I'll try. Um, uh, how... Has, how has CHIPS been able to involve users, the end users, in its, the way it designs uh, and deploys and then optimizes um, its system? Um, if you take, all our development is basically uh, need-based. It's the clinicians who come to us and they tell us, see, this is what we do. It will be nice if you can do this. Whenever we add new features, the clinicians tell us, see, this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is where I'm really getting stuck up. If you give this, it will save time that I see the patient, I can see the patient and make better decisions. So the clinicians are totally involved. They are the stakeholders. So that is why it's been widely used and it's successful. That's the reason it's been successful, uh, because they are getting involved in each and every step of the uh, decision process in which the system has been developed. Design as well? Y yes. Thank you, Anita, for that very enlightening talk and for all the use interaction. <laughs>